sacrifice, patience, resilience, and love are some of the lessons of Easter. The annual celebration of this sacrificial death of Jesus Christ for the sins of man and his resurrection on the third day are justifications for which resonates again and again. Can these essence of Easter aid in positioning Nigeria for a greater future? How can Nigerians take hold of the future without looking back on the past? That is our focus on Nigeria today. I am Shogun Ojelade. I'm being joined in the studio to discuss lessons of Easter for Nigeria at this material time by two men of God. I have with me Reverend Father Patrick Alumuku. He is the Director of Communications of the Catholic Archdiocese of Abuja. He is also the, Catholic, uh, the Director of the Catholic Television of Nigeria. Reverend Father, I welcome you to the program. Thank you very much, Shagun. Now, on his left is another man of God, Pastor Victor Atuluku. He is the senior, a senior, the senior pastor of World Aflame Family Church, based here in Abuja. Pastor, I welcome you to, to the program. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Now, we're looking at the lessons of Easter. Uh, and then, we're in, in the context of... Uh, the situation that we have or we find ourselves in Nigeria at this material time. Uh, Reverend Father, what exactly is the message or what are the messages of uh, the, the Easter celebration? Well, the greatest lesson of Easter is um, the love of God for man, for which uh, God the Father sent his Son to die for us and um, Jesus Christ who accepted to sacrifice the luxury of uh, of heaven to come to earth and to suffer and to die for us love uh, for mankind that was in sin uh, love for mankind that had fallen um, and was in enmity, therefore, with God. And um, he chose deliberately to come and liberate us. So I think that the central lesson for Easter is the love that God has for us. And um, that love then we learn from, and we ought then to show it and to share with others. I think centrally that is uh, the basic uh, lesson that we learn at Easter. Mm. Uh, now, uh, uh, Pastor, uh, today is Good Friday, uh, but today is the day that uh, Christ was uh, crucified. So why do Christians refer to today as being good uh, in view of what happened um, about 2,000 years ago? to Jesus Christ. Yes, today is Good Friday and uh, really good because the death of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary is central to what, what he came to do on earth. In fact, the Bible teaches us that without his death there will be no salvation. And uh, that's what differentiates Christianity from any other philosophy or thought that our Savior paid the price to redeem us. His death is the ultimate sacrifice that brings God, brings mankind back to their maker God. So because of the goodness of God that flows out of his death, we call it good. Mm. Yes, he suffered, he bled, he died. Death in itself is not a good thing in human society. But it is because of the significance of his death. He didn't die as a martyr. He was not just a man who was killed for his beliefs. He was a sacrifice in the place of sinful humanity. 
Mm. That's what makes it good. Mm. It is because he died we are accepted with God. Okay. Now, you want to add uh, something to that, uh, Reverend Father? No, I think that uh, he's made a strong point. But uh, Good Friday is, is precisely good because of um, the pain that he underwent for us, the suffering he underwent for, to make us free. Um, and so it is good because someone accepted to make a sacrifice to make us free. And I think this is what, uh, what makes it good. Uh, it's not that we um, derive any joy in, in pain, in the pain that Jesus went through, but he did that to be able to make us free. And so that suffering makes us free. And for that reason, our freedom is a reason for joy. Yeah. Our freedom is a, a reason uh, for the goodness, which uh, mm. we refer to uh, on this day, Good Friday. Mm. Now, uh, uh, Pastor, Pastor, uh, the human beings, Christians, many Christians, tend to take this love for granted. Um, great price Christ has paid. Uh, but if you look at our, the way our daily lives, what we do, uh, we tend to take this grace of this death and, and what it portends uh, for humanity. We tend to take it uh, for granted, uh, doing some of those things that does not i mean do, that do not give credit that do not that will not even make christ or uh, the godhead happy uh, why why do we still continue that way hatred here and there uh, speeches and uh, actions and utterances why now um i think um a major part of it is that we don't focus on it enough we don't talk about it enough uh, the Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So what you hear all the time is what you tend to believe. I think we preachers should spend more time talking about the death of Jesus Christ and the significance of it. Teaching on uh, the love uh, the Reverend Father talked about just now and what that love is supposed to mean to us and how we are supposed to reflect it in society. If we hear more of these kind of teachings, then our lives will definitely reflect it more. I think it's because people don't hear about it enough. A lot of times we focus our church messages on every other thing except the real essence of Christianity, which is the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We, we probably only talk about it at Easter, uh, uh, Reverend Father. Uh, he, he has touched on a very very uh, large topic there what goes on on the pulpit what religious leaders talk about there are so many other things now they talk about uh, except the message of salvation and even spreading the gospel where where did we miss it or where are they losing it well i think we need to um, retrace our steps and go back to talking about um, the central issues of our faith, you know, about heaven and about the fact that there is also hell. Not too many people talk about hell today mm. and um, I just uh, saw a story and, and with the many atheists that mm. there are, there's uh, this story making the rounds in the social media about um, the meeting between the Pope and um, mm -hmm. a journalist in Italy, mm -hmm. you know, about the non existence of hell. Mm -hmm. That is not true. The Vatican it's, has actually just refuted that yeah, and yeah, said Vatican it is not true. Yeah. We need to talk about this. We need to talk about the fact that um, we must do what we can to make heaven. And um, doing that means making an effort to please Jesus, who made this huge sacrifice for our sins. Um, we're not talking enough about that. There are a number of other issues. I don't think that this is the place to, mm. to, to talk about them now, but we're talking about a number of other things that are purely material mm. and um, which do not have um, a major role in you know, moving us um, you know, closer to God. 
and uh, closer to the love of Jesus who died for the love of us. Mm. Yeah, the, thank you very much. The program is uh, Nigeria Today. We are, take, we are taking a look at the lessons of Easter and as it pertains to the situation in Nigeria. Uh, we continue the discussion now. Uh, Pastor, let's look at the, the, message of, the message of Easter, what Christ did. It's all about love, it's all about sacrifice. I mean, releasing himself for the pain of, of mankind. But if you look at our society today, it is uh, everyone to himself, God for us all. Uh, selfishness, uh, uninterested in sacrificing for others, hatred and, and, and all that. Now, uh, if we are, if, have we learned anything, even from, the, from both religious books, they preach tolerance, sacrifice, love. So what has drawn man or Nigerians away from some of these teachings of the holy books? Uh, like I said earlier, the teachings are in the books, but the preachers have to bring them out. Mm. <laughs> Just the fact that they are in the books, don't make them active in our lives. It is what we say that people hear. It's what they hear, they believe, and act upon. And I think it's time we use the very lessons of the essence of Jesus' sacrifice to build a better society. Because... One of the things Nigerians need to realize is that every great goal will demand sacrifice to achieve it. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2 that for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. The cross was great suffering, but it was because he, the joy set before him was that of our salvation. He wanted to see us in the arms of God again. And because of that, he endured and now he has achieved that goal. We call ourselves children of God because of what he has done. Now there's a greater goal of building a great nation. And it's going to take sacrifice. Nigerians are notorious for wanting to snap their fingers and everything falls into place. We need to embrace a culture of sacrificing for great goals as a nation. Mm. Now, uh, talking about sacrifice, it's good that we're mentioning the, the lead. We should not forget the leadership. Um, Christ was the leader, but he submitted himself uh, as the sacrificial lamb. Now, today, uh, Reverend Father, to what extent are our leaders sacrificing for the followership? Well, I think this is a very important question um, in the context of our discussion today, but also in the context of our nation. Um, the role of uh, the leader in uh, bringing about change, you know, within society. You know, Nigeria has um, always looked for good leadership. And um, both in ecclesia or in uh, political or social societies. And um, Nigeria has often been failed by its uh, leadership. You know, but I think that more than anything else, um, the, the political leadership um, has failed this country. Um, again and again, people tend to think people when didn't get to leadership positions uh, prepared enough. Uh, they didn't, didn't understand what it meant. They didn't... Uh, uh, actually learn the lessons they should have learned before getting there or they get there as if they, are, they got there by accident and so we have you know from one uh, leadership to another we seem not to be able to make it you know um, and we're at a very critical moment uh, right now the leadership of Christ was one that was exemplary he led um, and his example was one to be followed you know we had uh, yesterday the celebration on, on on holy thursday of the mass of the last supper the last day that jesus christ um, had a meal with his disciples 
And the Gospels tell us that when they had finished the meal, he took a towel and got water and began to wash the feet of his disciples. And when he finished, he asked them, do you know why I have done this? So if I, whom you call your master and your leader, should wash your feet, mm. you should wash each other's feet. In other words, this leadership must be by example, okay. you know, and so on and so forth. But okay. Our leadership no, is not exactly no, by example. We are looking at, we want to be leaders because we have particular interests that uh, are, are for us. Okay. Okay. Uh, Reverend Father, I, I'll have to stop you there. Where the program is Nigeria today. We are taking a look at the message of Easter uh, to Nigeria and Nigerians at this material time. We will take a short break. My guests are still in the house. Coming up on NTA News 24, Nigeria Today, 7.30, Monday to Friday, with exciting anchors on topical issues. Inspirators, a search for those who inspire others. Business 24, a business magazine program. Late edition repackaged. Fresh and exciting programming on NTA News 24. Stay with us. Welcome back. The program uh, Nigeria Today continues on the lessons of Easter. Now, uh, Pastor, uh, there is uh, one... Um, uh, text message going around that uh, Christ fed uh, 5,000 with uh, uh, lo five loaves of bread and two fishes uh, way back 2,000 years ago. But today, many pastors and religious leaders are being fed by hungry 5,000. Uh, uh, that's uh, to buttress what is obvious to many now that even our uh, pastors and people that are leaders in, in the church um, are not doing enough. First, to help the needy as Christ paid his, his, the supreme price for them. Rather, they are feeding on, um, uh, on the flock. Now, if the narrative is to change, uh, how do we begin to have a situation where the, the, the leaders begin to care more uh, uh, for, for the congregation. I, I like the fact that when uh, the Reverend Father spoke just now, he talked about leadership not just in a political sense. He mentioned uh, leadership in ecclesiastical circles also. And uh, the complicity is on all fronts in Nigeria. The unfortunate thing is that part of uh, the hangover from the colonial era is that we built a leadership structure in Nigeria, a mindset that feeds on the people. The colonial masters came to conquer, to rule, and to plunder. They created the best parts of the cities and called them GRAs, government reserved areas, and mm. that's where they lived. Mm. And that will always be the best part of the city. We've continued the practice. Mm. The best part of the city is where the leaders live. So they don't mm. even know what, how, what the people suffer. And so you'll find that um, it transverses both the secular and the spiritual. But if you look over the 20th century, three of the most outstanding leaders celebrated beyond the borders of their national sphere of influence, Mahatma Gandhi, uh, Martin Luther King Jr., Nelson Mandela, all modeled their leadership after Jesus Christ. All, including Mahatma Gandhi, who was not a Christian. He said he was a Hindu, mm. but Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the epistle, I mean the Gospels, were his basic leadership manual. That's what he said in his lifetime. And that kind of leadership produces greatness without effort. Mm. Because in God's scheme of things, authority is gained or should be gained through sacrifice, not dominance. That's the kind of leadership that Jesus taught. Hmm. So my challenge to my colleagues on the 
altar on the pulpit is we should model our leadership after Christ not after some other you know paradigms that are available that Jesus himself said out loud, outrightly we should not be like that mm. when we are like Christ our hearts will be for the people okay. and we're going to achieve results okay. that transform society now uh, Christians believe that on the on the third day uh, Christ rose from the dead and that is resurrection the hope uh, that that rekindles the hope of, of uh, Christians but to take it further it has spiritual implications um, uh, if Christ rose on the third day what does that signify to followers of Christ and indeed the world that should make our lives to change uh, in various various areas uh, uh, Reverend Father the resurrection of Christ was um, a major moment of hope among uh, his followers, among his disciples, among all those disciples uh, and apostles who had worked very closely with him, uh, who saw at the moment of his death um, a moment almost of desperation. You know, what, we will, what can we do now that our leader is gone? And um, they kind of felt, um, as they said, if this can happen to green grass, what will happen to the dry? Yeah. You know, otherwise, if, it, if they're able to take our leader, what will happen to us? Yeah. So they thought this was the end of the movement which Jesus had brought. But the resurrection was a surprising but also joyful moment. As the Gospels tell us, in the morning of that third day, as women went to the tomb to... They found that the tomb was, was empty, empty, you know, and they ran back, uh, perhaps frightened that the suffering and the envy that the people had uh, against Jesus had not ended even after death. They were shocked and were surprised to so run back to the apostles, possibly mm. to go and to say to them, we don't know what has happened. We went to the tomb and found that the tomb was empty. Now, um, but then it didn't take long before Jesus began to appear to the apostles. So the resurrection is a moment of hope. And um, for us, then this is the most important point. In the light of our discussion, mm. we can also say for Nigeria, therefore, this Easter, and the resurrection of Easter is a moment of hope or should be a moment of hope for us because it, although we've gone through difficult times, we can look to the future with some um, uh, sentiment of hope mm. that things will be better and mm. things will improve. Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Pastor, I want you to tell, still tell this line of hope in relation to what we're going through uh, in this country many people are disillusioned uh, if we are to draw from this message of hope uh, what will you tell the congregation at this material time uh, i'll tell both the congregation and my fellow citizens that nigeria is a nation that god loves because we're praying people every nigerian you meet prays and though we may have so many national faults uh, so many things about the way we approach life that will not be pleasing to God. God is merciful and his mercy is over this country. So in our darkest moments, let us lift our eyes and look to God and know that after death, there is resurrection. Mm. That is the message of hope. Okay. Uh, thank you, Reverend Father. As we close this program, one or two sentences, what are your uh, last words for Nigerians at this material. Yeah, two things uh, briefly would be, I like to quote from the great um, African theologian and saint Augustine of Hippo in North Africa, who said we are Easter people and Alleluia is our song. Mm. Alleluia is a song of joy. We are all happy. We all hope there will be a better tomorrow. But also, Easter reminds us that truth cannot be locked up in the tomb mm. just like jesus could not be locked up 
and left there even though they, they thought they had finished with him, he came out. So truth can never be locked up in the tomb and that whatever we do, uh, the truth will always come out. Okay. I, I must thank you, um, Reverend Father Patrick uh, Alumoku uh, of the Catholic Church, uh, Archdiocese of Abuja. I thank you for all that you've said on the program. Thank you. Mm. And uh, uh, Pastor Patrick Atuluku, of Senior Pastor of Water Flame Family Church, I thank you also for your comments on the program. Thank you. Yeah, I wish I wish you a uh, happy Easter. Thank, thank you. So you very thank you very much. You too. Uh, happy Easter until to all. until we come your way with yet another edition of the program. On behalf of every one of us in the studio, I am Shegun Ojelade, wishing everybody a happy Easter celebration. Mm -hmm.